welcome back to this module entitled Getting Organized. Now, one of the keys to working and running your business efficiently is to first become and then to stay organized. This doesn't come naturally for many of us, but when it comes to running your own business, it's critical. The first thing we're going to cover is laying the foundation of getting organized, and that is organizing your life through time management. So you think you're too busy to get organized? If you spend a lot of your day shuffling through stacks of papers and files looking for things that you need, you may want to take some extra time to clean things up and get organized. Whoa, wait a minute. I can hear you now. But I'm already too busy to take any more time to get organized, right? Well, that's probably true, but how much time do you waste searching for things now? The statistics are staggering. According to business experts, an average of an hour a day or more is spent looking for misplaced information from messy desks. Wow, I'll bet you could use that hour on better things than playing a constant game of hide and seek every day, right? Well, getting organized doesn't need to be a huge project. You can do it in little bits and pieces throughout the day. But once you do get everything organized, it's very easy to stay that way. Now, here's an example of some very easy ways to get organized, and they won't take up very much time at all. First, every time you come across something, whether it's mail or email or anything else, quickly decide if you need to keep it. If you don't need it, get rid of it right then. Don't become a pack rat. But if you do need it, make a place for it and put it there. In other words, find it a home. When you get something new, decide where it belongs and put it away right then. Then each time you use a file, quickly go through it and see if anything is outdated and can be eliminated. That oversized pile of reading material? When will you ever get the time to read that stuff? Get real. And if you're in a technical industry, how long will that information remain valid anyway? Go ahead and dump anything older than three months old. Cutesy toys and gadgets? Really, are they helping you? Go ahead and trash them. Old sticky notes that have lost their sticky. Toss them or recycle them. That pen that you always manage to pick up but don't like using it anyway? Go ahead and trash it. Sounds pretty simple to do, doesn't it? Yeah, I know, you still don't think you have the time. You've got a job to do. But what if becoming organized actually saved you time? Would it be worth it? I believe it would. Spend the time now to make more time later, because you can't afford not to get organized. So start with just one small thing, and build momentum from there. Before you know it, you'll be organized and saving tons of time and making tons more money. Most business owners know the value of developing a business and a marketing plan before a business is launched. But once the doors open, many entrepreneurs neglect to focus on the day-to-day -day operation, managing their business with little more than an overloaded email inbox and a to-do list scratched out on a sticky note. So let's start with something easy, time management. You may think that time management means scheduling every waking minute and putting yourself on an assembly line type of a schedule. Actually, done correctly, time management can free you up to do more non-working type activities, which will then give your life much more balance. Develop a time management system so that precious time is not wasted going in circles because you don't know where to start. Time management is not about working faster. It's the practice of spending more time on the right things and therefore working smarter. Now let me say that once more. Time management is not about working faster. It's the practice of spending more time on the right things and therefore working smarter. Well, first you need to be able to recognize what is important and understand the difference between important and urgent. Important tasks help us achieve long-term goals, 
or have other long-term significance. On the other hand, urgent tasks may need immediate attention to avoid a crisis, but are not necessarily important in the long term. There are a number of time management strategies taught in business development and self-improvement courses of instruction, but the following are the most important strategies to follow. Using them will increase productivity and reduce chaos. First, establish long-term written goals. Now, unless you want your business to flounder, you need to establish long-term written goals. Then, you need short-term written goals that will help you to achieve each of your long-term goals. One of your long-term goals should be to maintain the strength of your positive family bonds. Another of your long-term goals should be to maintain your mental and physical health. Quality time with your family and personal exercise time require you to set aside definite time periods to achieve these two goals. Remember, failing to plan is really nothing more than planning to fail. Next, set your priorities. Write down your goals and don't be vague. Be very specific about what it is that you want, when you want it, and the steps you need to take to get it. Break your goals down into manageable chunks and give yourself specific tasks to achieve each step. Make your lists. Limit your daily to-do list to six items or less. If your list is too long, you will feel defeated when you are unable to complete it. Prioritize the items on your list and try to devote 80% of your time and energy on the important tasks. Of course, there will be some days that nothing important gets done because the urgent items dominate. Next, delegation of duties is a real time saver. As an entrepreneur, how much is your time worth? For example, why should you perform clerical duties that a clerical assistant or a lower level professionals could do for you much more cheaply? Time is money, and your time is worth way too much for you to continue doing those things that you could hire someone else to do more cheaply. Even a part time assistant can be a great time energy and money saver. There are firms that specialize in contracting out part-time workers or you could Google the Internet to find independent part-timers. Find a way to combine tasks. For example, you could combine your aerobic exercise or your walking with self-improvement study by walking in and listening to downloads on your MP3 player. In addition, if you have to run an errand by car, Wait until you have more than one task to accomplish. You will save not only time, but also gas, which is very expensive today. Don't schedule your daily work tasks too tightly together. Leave time for the unexpected. You know, Murphy's Law states, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong, and at the worst possible moment. And believe me, Murphy is alive and well, and his law will surely haunt you. Customer service, family relations, and your mental and physical health can all suffer from a too tightly packed work schedule. Adhere to your commitments. Keep your promises to customers, suppliers, and employees. Making deliveries at the agreed upon time will win your customers' trust and will help you in getting repeat orders, as well as generating great word of mouth advertising. In addition, Making your payments on time to vendors and suppliers indicates a well-organized business. Eliminate or minimize distractions. You know, people, phones, clutter, hunger, email, you name it. They can eat up your entire workday. Become aware of what your distractions are and learn how to filter them out. Take care of necessary details before you sit down to start a project. If you dedicate specific times for your family, they will be much more understanding when you have to tell them of your need for privacy and focus during your work hours. Don't put off large, difficult tasks. Instead, break them down into smaller, more manageable chunks, and then do these small things one at a time. In addition, try to accomplish these difficult tasks during your peak energy periods of the day. In other words, if you're a morning person, do them first thing. But if you work best towards the end of the day, 
Save them till then. Arrange your workspace. The items you use most often should be situated closest to you. For example, if you use a particular file often, it should be within easy reach. On the other hand, if you consult a particular manual very little, place it on a shelf within walking distance of your desk. Follow the one-touch rule. That is, read it, then file it. Act on it or trash it. Many people who don't follow this rule have so much paper on their desk that they can't even see the top of the desk. Keep a daily work log. Some call this a to-do list. Develop the habit of planning for tomorrow the night before. Revise or make a new list at the end of each workday, bringing forward any tasks that did not get completed and mentally prepare for the next day. Your subconscious will help you organize your thoughts while you sleep. In addition, if you record your daily work activities and how much time you spent on them, you may be surprised. You may find that some of your less productive activities may, in fact, be consuming much more of your time than is necessary or than is profitable. The 80-20 rule holds that 20% of your work activities usually give you 80% of your profits. So, you really want to spend as much time as possible on the more profitable 20%. Schedule your time for planning. Develop the habit of planning for tomorrow. Take a few minutes to clean up your work area, make your to-do list, bring it forward any task that did not get completed, and mentally prepare for the next day. Your subconscious will help organize your thoughts while you sleep. And last, set aside time for personal and professional growth. Personal and professional growth is critical to your success. Whatever it takes, find the time to learn more about topics such as stress management, personal organization, problem solving, and many other things. This will, in turn, provide still other ways for you to work even smarter. So where do you stand right now? If you are not currently meeting your goals, it could be due to the fact that you haven't yet defined them. Using the suggestions that we just discussed, create a productivity plan to get you organized and allow you to accomplish more in less time. A productivity plan is simply an outline of tasks that you intend to complete on either a daily, a weekly, or a monthly basis. These tasks can range from basic operations to marketing and sales activities. Use your plan to get the most out of each day. Design a plan that fits the needs and goals of your business. If there are specific tasks that you need to complete each week, designate a specific day of the week to accomplish each one of them. Assigning tasks to specific days of the week will help you to get into a routine and minimize procrastination. In addition to specific daily tasks, you can also create a list of other goals to accomplish throughout the week. Tasks for individual businesses vary greatly. When developing your list, Ask yourself these questions. What tasks will help me with my general organization? What do I need to do to make sure that I am constantly marketing my business? How can I improve the company's bottom line? And what tasks should I be doing that I tend to avoid? Take the development of your plan very seriously. Write it out in either a word processing document or in a spreadsheet format and update it regularly. Print it out and post it near your desk so it's always handy. In addition to a weekly plan, you can also define monthly and yearly goals. Once you begin to check off tasks, not only will you feel a sense of accomplishment, but your productivity will inevitably improve. But your plan doesn't have to stop with you. If you have employees or virtual assistants, be sure to create plans for them too. Soon, everyone in your business will be working smarter, and your only regret will be that you didn't create your plan sooner. So are you going to manage your business, or are you going to let your business manage you? In running your business, it's important that you maintain accurate, up-to-date records, file correspondence so that you can find it when you need it, 
and keep your work area neat and clean. As we've already discussed, the best reason to do this is for yourself. It will save you time in the long run and will also make it easier for you to work much more efficiently. But if you can't motivate yourself to stay organized, then do it for your customers. Those who do business with you don't want to waste their time while you search for a product catalog or a copy of an invoice. Your customers want to feel confident that you are in control of your business and that you can quickly and efficiently help them with their needs. Confidential files need to stay confidential. Business records need to be current. Computer data should be backed up regularly, if for no other reason than to provide you with peace of mind that your data is safe. Like so many other elements of business, it may help to determine your specific needs. Will you need a file for every customer? How many customers will you have? How much file space will you need for them? Do you have to stock inventory for resale or parts and supplies for providing your product or service? If you determine your space needs ahead of time and plan for them, it will be much easier for you to stay organized. If dealing with customers often keeps you hopping, consider setting aside time each week that is dedicated to keeping up with filing, cleaning, and organizing. Perhaps you'll decide to go into your office early every Thursday and spend an hour getting your files up to date. Whatever your schedule, it will be easier to stay on top of it if you organize it regularly and make it a part of your regular routine. The once every six months pile reduction method just really isn't recommended, and it doesn't work. If neatness is not your strong suit, consider hiring an outside cleaning service. Knowing that someone will be showing up each week or twice a month to vacuum and dust may be just the motivation you need to keep those piles under control. To be truly successful, you definitely need organizational skills. In that vein, there are a number of other things to consider. Regardless how large or small your business is, you need to treat it like a corporate office. Working in your own business requires discipline, and you need to develop a professional business environment. If you're working from home, you'll want to create a buffer between work and home life. In the corporate world, the morning commute allows for collecting your thoughts for the day, and the evening commute allows time to unwind prior to arriving home. But for your business, you may need to develop your own routine to unwind, like going to the gym or walking the dog in the afternoon when you get home. Now, there's no way that I or anyone else can tell you that running a successful business is easy or that you'll get rich in a day or in a week. That's just not humanly possible. Well, maybe it is if you hit the lottery, but let's get realistic here. I'm going to share with you a few things to consider. And if you follow them, they'll definitely make a change in your business life and will make you much happier overall. You know, a phone ringing all day will limit your productivity. So screen your calls. Use caller ID. Use voicemail. Realize that things can and usually will take twice as long to complete and can cost three times as much as expected. People who are new to the business world may not realize this. Time and money are valuable commodities. No matter how much you plan ahead, things may not turn out as planned. Budgeting and scheduling, while giving a starting point, need to be realistic and flexible. In business, patience is not only a virtue, it's a necessity. And even the most detailed plan, broken down into its smallest elements, is subject to change in situations that are beyond your control. But you don't want to waste your time. It's your most valuable commodity. Don't be afraid to say no. If you join local groups like the Chamber of Commerce, industry associations, or lead generation business clubs, they normally all want some of your time. And they'll definitely take advantage of your time if allowed. Don't waste time on people who are extremely high maintenance. I'm sure you've heard it before. You want to always surround yourself with positive, upbeat people. Next, 
Develop strong follow-up techniques. Persistence, coupled with a clear follow-up plan, definitely pays off. If a potential customer asks that you call back in two weeks or two months, do it. If you don't follow up, someone else will. So take whatever steps are necessary. Likewise, when you say that you'll call back or follow up, do it. This increases credibility and increases the opportunity to make more sales and build strong business relationships. This is where a contact manager software program or a PDA to keep track of current and potential customers comes in and allows for scheduling follow-up calls and visits. The contact manager can usually also be used as a to-do list and an appointment calendar. Create systems for yourself for managing all incoming information. Now, this is required whether the incoming information is paper-based or electronic. A neat, organized workspace allows for locating information quickly and easily. Keep all of your working papers and notes organized and in their place. Unanswered emails and full voice mailboxes generate stress and indicate to others that you are not organized. When they recognize this, they may not want to work with you or want you to work for them. Magazines, newspapers, and other printed periodicals do not belong on your desk. Use bins or some type of a filing system. Inboxes, bins, and baskets are only for temporary storage of papers that need to be moved forward. And last, do what you love and love what you do. This is so very, very important. Work is work. But when you find something that interests you, you become much better at it. You are more devoted to it, you are willing to learn more about it, and it won't feel so much like work. You have to be excited about working your own business. It's too easy to just say, I don't feel like working today. But that one day can lead to the next, and so on. Then, when payday comes around, or the bills come due, and you have zero dollars in your checking account, you're going to wonder why. Keep in mind, each of us gets 24 hours a day to do with as we wish. Some people wish they had more time, while others wish that time would pass a lot quicker. Before you can improve your use of time, you need to get a handle on where you are spending your time and how you may be abusing it. Most of us tend to waste time in the same old ways, day after day, year after year. You can't change or fix what you don't know is wrong. So before you launch into some sophisticated time management program, remember, you cannot manage time. It passes with or without you. But what you can manage includes activities, decisions, people, resources, success, problems, failures, materials, and actions. It's completely up to you to do something about your management of time. <music>